Hey, it's Paul with RackOutfitters.com, here to show you the installation of the Tesla Model 3 roof rack system. And here we have the front bar pre-installed. We'll install the rear bar to show you all the steps involved with the installation of, of this roof rack system. So here on the workbench, we've got the components that are involved. This is the rear bar. And just a quick overview of the construction. This is an extruded aluminum bar with a durable black powder semi-gloss finish. It has a track in the top to accommodate various track mounted accessories. The towers at the end, these are cast aluminum towers, all very high quality, well, well constructed, very good construction on the, on the system. Here we have the 3M film, which has icons showing exactly the position. These are all pre-installed. We have the rubber base pads, also with the same corresponding icon showing exactly where that's installed. Next we have the metal hook with the threaded post. That's, what's, that's what will be gripping into the underside of the glass where there's a dedicated connection point. And then here we have the threaded knob that holds the tower down onto that threaded post. And you have a tool that's included to tighten that knob. You have keys that are included and a specialty tool to help um, get the rubber gasket out of the way to insert that, that hook. So let's go ahead and demonstrate how, that go, how we go about doing that. I'll take these tools over with me. So we pre-installed the 3M film and here on the film there's an arrow which points to an arrow that's engraved into the glass. So that really helps get everything aligned quickly and easily to make sure that you've got good protection to the painted surface of the vehicle. Okay, so here is the tool that's used. This short side here is used to press in and pull backwards. So you're, you're trying to separate the rubber gasket fr from the position against the painted surface of the, uh, of the metal roof there. So it's being pulled this direction. Now, we have found it could be difficult to insert that tool without a little assistance. So what we found is using another tool to get up underneath to pull the rubber away first and then insert that tool makes it quite a bit easier. Okay, so that's, that's the step is you just insert the tool and pull back on that rubber. And that'll give us access to that factory connection point that exists under. And just so you know, we're not actually pulling directly on the glass. There's a, a dedicated hard point that's under the glass that this hook is, is gripping to. And it's very obvious where that hooks into. Of course, you're aligning it with the arrow, but even if you didn't have that arrow, you can feel there's a definite indention where that's placed. So once you have that in place, and you saw the method, it's just simply coming in horizontally and rotating into place there. Once you have that there, then you just slide your tool out of the way. Okay, so next we have the rubber base pad, and the rubber base pad has the icon that, that we mentioned earlier. So there's a slot and the center hole and that just simply drops down over the threaded post and the top of that hook. And then that will be right over the top of your 3M film there. Okay, so next let me grab the rear load bar. So when you, when you load the, when you position the rear load bar, you just take it and extend it over the top and of course we already have the opposite side pre-installed so I'll just drop it down onto that post and then over on this side I'll bring it down directly over that hole there and it just lands right in place where we need it to be. The next step is we have our turn knob and that turn knob just turns on to the top of that threaded post. If you have to you can push down and rock it a little bit to expose more threading. That's what we found more on the front bars that there was less threading exposed so we had to push down a little bit more. Okay so the way this is designed is you have a, a slot here on the tower and a slot on the knob and as you tighten that's where you'll need to finish on either side of this turn knob. Now the the proper tension for this as dictated in the manual is five to six newton meters so to get that exact tensioning, we've preset our torque wrench and we'll go ahead and tighten it to the exact 
five to six Newton meters. So as I get close, okay, so that's, that's my tension. So I have this set at five Newton meters. And so I know I can, I have a whole, I can go between five and six. So I know I can continue on to get it to that notch. So I'll go ahead and go a little bit tighter than five Newton meters, but I know I don't want to continue on for another half turn because I feel that would be over tight. Now the tool that's provided with this system is just your hex tool. In order for you to feel confident that you're not over tightening, it's advisable not to use it in this configuration. That would definitely give you too much leverage. Use it in this configuration and that, that you can get much better feel. By the time you have it, it feels tight in that configuration, you're, you're at about that six, five to six Newton meters. Always better to go too loose than too tight because once this is locked, it can't loosen up any further. And you can always do a test once you, once you have it on to make sure it's not moving. So better to go, if you don't have a, a torque meter, a torque uh, tool, better to go a little bit too loose than, than over tighten. Next, we'll go ahead and put on the outer cover. And the uh, outer cover is different from most other systems where the, the lock is actually incorporated into the cover. So in a, uh, from a design standpoint, they chose to have the lock under the cover. So we'll go ahead and lock it first. And now this can't be turned. It, this lock engages into that, that knob. So to put the cover on here, you have the two notches and the two indentions there. So that just sets in there first and then it snaps at the top. So it has, gives a very sleek outer appearance. And uh, the only way to take it off is you can put your finger pressed down on this rubber and push down in there and peel, pull back on it. And then that'll allow it to come off when you need to remove the rack. But otherwise that'll just stay on tight for you as it is there and you've got a good sturdy crossbar system. So now with this installed, of course, you'd finish up on the opposite side. It's exactly the same as this side, as are the, uh, the front positions as well. Let's get some specifications. This rack is rated to 150 pounds, evenly distributed. It's always best when it comes to roof racks is to have your weight evenly distributed on the front and rear bar and also side to side as best as you can. That way, each of the towers is supporting an equal amount of weight. Now, the crossbar spacing on this, this roof rack system is right at 27 and three quarters inches, or in metric, about 707 millimeters. So, this system again, it has the tracks at the front and back of the bar, and because it is manufactured by Yakima. Yakima produces a full series of attachments that connect into that track. They're called smart slot connections. They work for their ski carriers as well as their bicycle carriers. And as uh, they produce more and more, there's many other accessories that can work with this. So Rack Outfitters is not a source to purchase these Tesla racks. They're only available through Tesla on their website. However, we are a source for the various accessories that work on this roof rack system. So in the product, in the video description, you'll find links to many of the products that we have found to be top picks to be used with the Tesla rack. So we also have found other, other brands that make really nice fits to this as well. Um, so check out that link in the bottom of our video description for all the details on that. And I'm Paul with rackoutfitters.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.